Hello human beings and possible AI interfaces. Welcome back to the channel. So in the past week, quite a lot has gone down. In the beginning of this week, Stable Diffusion was officially released as open source software, meaning anyone can redistribute it and modify it as they please. And yeah, quite a lot of applications have already sprung up. So today we're doing a Stable Diffusion video. We're covering a lot of, you know, little news tidbits, but mainly the main part of this video is how you can run Stable Diffusion for completely free at home on your own computer, and how you can run it uh, online as well if your computer's not powerful enough for completely free as well. So yeah, this has been highly requested by a lot of you. At first, a lot of you guys were telling me, oh Matt, make a video on how I can run it on my own computer using the traditional method, which would involve some knowledge in coding in Python, using a command prompt to generate everything, which is a little bit time consuming in my opinion. And I knew honestly that apps were going to spring up for running Stable Diffusion on your own hardware, and they certainly have. So we will definitely be taking a look at those. This is gonna require no real coding knowledge. It's gonna be a super easy setup and install for you guys. And in my opinion, the applications are already really good. First off, we've got some interesting stuff though. Some useful Stable Diffusion related websites sites and news. So the first thing I want to cover here is Lexica. Search over 5 million Stable Diffusion images and prompts. So we've already got this massive database of Stable Diffusion generated imagery. So you guys can search and learn from other people's prompts and sort of see what Stable Diffusion does really well. Quite a lot like the Midjourney website if you guys use Midjourney AI generator, which Midjourney now, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, already has a Stable Diffusion implementation because, of course, Stable Diffusion is open source software. Why are these other AI generation companies not going to give it a try? Because it is really good. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but the new Midjourney beta is like Midjourney data set with Stable Diffusion generation. Anyways, let's search for a prompt here on Lexica because I think personally, if you like generating with AI imagery, a website like this is going to be super useful to come up with ideas. So we'll just search lemon. We've got some lemon pirate ships here and they're actually all pretty cool looking. And here we go. We got some prompts related to the prompts that I like to generate. 50 millimeter professional photograph of a fictional anthropomorphic lemon character on the beach relaxing, wearing sunglasses, volumetric lighting taken on a Pentax K1000. Funny enough, I actually have a, a Pentax K1000. It's like a, a retro film camera, I guess you could say. Anyways, wow, we actually got some really good generations. I actually really like this prompt. And of course, for whoever generated this prompt, thank you very much for watching the channel. This image came out amazing. So let's say I find a generation I particularly like here in Lexica. I can go over and copy the prompt. We've also got the seed and the C model and time. And now I can head over into Dream Studio, of course, and I can put the same exact prompt in here. I believe C stood for CFG scale, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that to 10, and we'll just give four of these a shot with this prompt. So yeah, we're already starting to get some decent results. I like this one here. I mean, he's a little bit creepy, but anyways, yeah, Lexica is a good stable diffusion resource. It gives you a lot of really good ideas. If you see a prompt you like, you can build off it possibly. And uh, yeah, it's a really easy way of seeing what Stable Diffusion might be particularly good at. Or if you just want to see lots of stuff like a selfie of Walter White relaxing on the beach. Or if you want to see the classic GTA art of Walter White catching a fish as a Lego. But yeah, there's just so many awesome ideas here on this website. And yeah, in general, I think Lexica is a fantastic resource. Anyways, folks, moving on to some Stable Diffusion news. We've got InPainting coming to Stable Diffusion, which is super exciting. I'm sure it will be implemented in Dream Studio as well. Um, but essentially the actual in painting has been created apparently, but it just hasn't been added to the, uh, the official thing yet. But the, the code and the script is here. So people could potentially attempt to combine them together since everything's open source. So yeah, that's super exciting. In painting example script is already out for stable diffusion. Again, stable diffusion just been moving at light speed released a week ago. We're already getting in painting and a ton of apps also in news. Stable Diffusion apparently is getting its own anime model, like a sub model of Stable Diffusion. So yeah, if you guys are into generating anime, it must be extremely popular considering they're making a whole separate 
data set for it. But yeah, there's going to be a full anime model. And by the way, guys, all of these links will be linked down below. This post right here by Whiskey, who is a legend in the AI generation community here on Reddit, this is a full list of all, like, stable diffusion systems that uh, we've come across so far. There's 40 seven of them so if you're interested in stable diffusion related stuff different collab notebooks github repos different versions discord bots web apps night cafe neural blender image to image collab notebook for example yeah just tons of really awesome stable diffusion stuff all in a big list here this is pretty much the list of all of the different systems, 47 of them. Okay, finally, moving on to running Stable Diffusion at home on your own machine. Again, the original way of doing this would be to download it from GitHub and set it up with Python and all that stuff. That is a ton of work. You need some prerequisite knowledge. It takes a long time. And I knew stuff like this was going to come out, so I just, I don't think it's even worth bothering with at this point, unless you really want to mess with things in your coder, which I know a big portion of the community is. But if you just want to generate art for free with your own machine, this is the move. Stable Diffusion G-Risk GUI 0.1. So this is like very early alpha stuff. This is not like extremely stable, possibly. I mean, it, I really haven't seen any problems with it personally, but this could have some issues, but I, of course it's going to be updated. So this is an interface to run the stable diffusion model at home using your own system for free. Some help with the prompts, Lynx Lexica, which we talked about earlier. Try to generate images at 512 by 512 for best results, although you can pick whatever resolutions you want. Well, they actually have to be a multiple of 64, so. You know, similar, to, obviously, to the Dream Studio website. So, you can't deliberately produce or share illegal or harmful outputs. We've got some important stuff here. Some issues with GTX 1660s. Currently, you can only generate one image per prompt, but we can repeat the same prompt in a lot of lines, which I will show when I actually run the program later. More steps don't use more memory, just more time. So, you can always just run more steps if you want. Just takes a little bit longer. So yeah, folks, then down here at the bottom of the website, this is the important part. We've got the big Reddit download button, stable diffusion grisk gui.rar. So it's a RAR file. Three gigabytes, it downloads pretty fast in my opinion, but Stable Diffusion is a decent sized model. So we will click the download button right here. It says, thanks for downloading. You can just close this out and then the download will start down in the corner. So to open this file, since it's a RAR file, we need a program that can open RAR files. I will link this down below. This is an application that can open RAR files. It's a super easy install. Literally all we have to do here is go find Windows 64 bit or Windows 32 bit. Whichever your system is, yours is probably 64-bit if you're trying to run Stable Diffusion. So we will click the download button right here, and then it immediately downloads 7-zip. Then with 7-zip, all we have to do is open the installer EXE. It will prompt this little setup window, and we just click the install button, and it will say 7-zip is installed. Okay, so once we have fully downloaded the Stable Diffusion G-Risk GUI, we can go ahead and open up our downloads folder where it has downloaded. And as you can see, mine already has turned into a 7-zip file. But yours probably isn't going to look like this. What you want to do is right click on it, then go down to open with. And if you don't see 7-zip already down there, you're going to want to go ahead and choose another app. Click down on more apps, scroll all the way down, and then you're going to want to click look for another app on this PC. And then you're just going to want to click 7-zip and then 7-zip FM here. And then when you double click like that, it will open up that RAR file you downloaded with 7-zip. And as you can see, there's just one folder in here. He makes it super easy. This is, this, this is the program. All we are going to want to do is go ahead and drag this folder right onto your desktop or wherever you want to keep it. I already did this, so I'm not going to do it. But basically, when you drag it, it's just going to extract this RAR folder onto wherever you're moving it to. And then you're going to have this little Stable Diffusion G-Risk GUI folder. And this is where all of the fun is going to happen. So double clicking to open this folder. It might look a little bit scary at first, honestly. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but they make it super easy. All we are going to do is scroll all the way down until we see a Stable Diffusion G-Risk GUI.exe. And what I'm going to do is just double click it. And then we're going to open up this little window here. This is essentially the command prompt window. And right here in the middle is where we are going to do all our generations. This is Stable Diffusion G-Risk GUI 0.1. And honestly, for a 0.1, it works pretty darn well. As you can see, I already did a prompt here. Batman, if he was a girl. I'll do another prompt here. This is where we type them in. Walter White, if he was made out of lemons. But if I want to try another prompt, I just 
hit the enter key and then go to the next line and then this next one will be an orange so i'll get two separate images walter white if he was made out of lemons and an orange and let's say i wanted to run multiple variations of walter white if he was made out of lemons i'll just copy this again hit enter to make a new line and then paste it so i'll have walter white if he was made out of lemons twice and then that'll do two variations and then you can actually select and change an output folder so what i can do here is just go ahead and make a new folder just name it subscribe here and then i'll click on output folder go down to my desktop then click on the subscribe folder and then just select it as the folder so yeah now subscribe here on my desktop is the output folder and in here i can go ahead and select how many steps so we can do 50 steps or 25 steps then we've got v scale and to be honest with you viewers i'm not exactly sure what they mean by v scale however leaving it at the default parameter seems to have not been causing many issues at all it seems just fine and then of course down here on resolution which uses more vram i've got it set to 512 by 512 right now However, you know, this depends on how powerful your graphics card in your computer is. I probably wouldn't be able to bump it up much higher than 512 by 512. But if you have like a really nice system, like you got like a 3080 or a 3090 or something, you might be able to bump it up a little bit higher. And if you have something worse, you know, maybe you'd have to go a little lower. But of course, there are free upscalers like I've shown on this channel before. Anywho, we can go ahead and click the render button. And as you can see, um things will start to begin here on the command prompt it says loading model it might it takes a little bit of time to actually load the stable diffusion model into the system and then it says rendering walter white if he was made out of lemons and it shows you you know the iterations and how long it's taking here on the side it's definitely slower than the dream studio beta website obviously because they use really nice servers and all that but it's actually pretty quick Again, it really depends on your graphics card and what you have on your system for generating, but it will just go in order for your prompts. And there we go. All of our images have been generated into our new folder here. So we've got Walter White, if he was lemon, and there we go. There's Walter White. There's our stable diffusion generation. So yeah, this just makes it super easy to generate. <laughs> there's, there's another Walter White. He's in the lab coat. It, it was getting confused about the lemons, but yeah, he's definitely there. And then finally, we've got an orange. So yeah, all very cool stuff here. Stable Diffusion at home running on your own system, on your own hardware for completely free. Definitely check this one out. I think it's easy to use with this nice GUI. And uh, so far, you know, it's not so bad. Definitely go check out the Patreon because this guy is nice enough to be doing stuff like this for completely free. Anyways, folks, moving on to Stable Diffusion running in a Google Collab notebook. So this would be running, you know, out there on a website somewhere on the Google Cloud. So if your computer isn't powerful enough to run it at home, you might want to do something like this. This is also completely free and I will link it down below. And this also has NSFW disabled. So maybe Google will take this down at some point but I will link it for now. This also has been updated pretty frequently so far. We've already got a 0.31. So essentially how these collab notebooks work is you just start to run the code in order. So we'll start with this one. It's going to ask us if we want to run it. We'll click run anyway, and it will begin to run it. It's going to give us a high RAM requirement here. So, okay, this one has ran now. There's a little green check mark as we can see over here on the side. Now we will move on to the next one. So this is where we have the option to use Google Drive if we want. I'm just not going to bother using Google Drive to generate this just for this example. But yes, you can connect your Google Drive and have everything generate right into your Google Drive. So just let this one run as well. We've also got some other ones, low VRAM patch enable nsfw filter okay so this big setup here took about five minutes but it definitely worked we've got that little green check mark and now we can finally go ahead and render stable diffusion images let's go ahead and give that little lemon guy a shot again that first prompt that we were messing it around with so a prompt file is a text file that contains a, a prompt per line i'm gonna go ahead and attempt to just not include anything in there and just we'll, we'll test out one prompt here again this is steps we can go all the way up to 500 and i think the normal one was set like at 160 or something we'll just do 115 so we can leave this at zero for a completely random seed number of iterations for a prompt here the default here is at six we can change the width and height as well 
all the way up to 1920, but I think that will crash your Google Collab Notebook for sure. We'll just do 448 by 448. We've got the CFG scale as well. For some reason, it's at 13 default. I'm going to lower this down to like 8.4. So yeah, this is actually very similar to the Dream Studio website here in terms of the settings and everything. Obviously, you know, this doesn't look as nice though, and it's not as easy to use. And you can change the precision here from full or autocast. And I guess if you're using the low VRAM patch, you have to use autocast. And you can use drive for pictures if you want. I'm not going to do that. And actually, they built in their own image upscaler here, which is really cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and render all this now that we've selected our settings. We just click the run button right next to render images. Okay, so now we can see it is actually generating our images here. And we definitely got our image generated here, which is nice to see and it actually does face correction and upscaling for us as well and you know that that comes out all right that's not too bad this is a nice little github with quite a lot of features seems to be generating more of them as well i think too but yeah this one definitely works definitely go check it out completely free for you guys to use pretty easy to set up takes a little bit of time to set up though and you know it has google drive connection and all that too so yeah it's pretty nice stuff Nonetheless, pretty impressive, I have to say. Finally, this is more of an honorable mention than anything else. I might make a full video on this application at the end of the day, but Visions of Chaos also has its own stable diffusion that you can test out, although the, the setup's a little bit more complicated, but all of the information you need will be on this website. So yes, similar sort of to the GUI G-Risk here for stable diffusion this one also has a built-in stable diffusion for for their application and also a ton of other stuff which is why i might have to cover it in a in a video at some other point but yeah it's called visions of chaos but it just creates crazy imagery and that's sort of what it's known for they implemented stable diffusion in it but to set up machine learning in visions of chaos there's quite a little bit of a setup that has to be done and i think the other method methods that i showed are a little bit easier so yeah this one's just sort of an honorable mention if you guys want to check it out anyways guys all of the links will be down in the description below thank you so much for watching this video and yeah i will see you guys in the next one let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and i'm sure you guys will also help each other out if you have any questions but yeah i really like these new stable diffusion models that people are offering and yes you can definitely get stable diffusion for completely free to run on your own machine or just use on a website for completely free within less than a week it happened so yeah amazing stuff and i will see you guys in the next video